to the dead. Let him come, let him come, let him come. He'll only have to beat him again. It's the best team in London, no, oh, the best team of both. Everybody knows us, we call Mill Road. Let him come, let him come, let him come. Let him all come down to the dead. It's the best team in London, no, the no, best team of all. Everybody knows the world. Night in a week, haven't you? Oh, all right. No, everyone can hear you singing over there. Oh, no, I'm just singing to myself. Come on, help yourself. Come on, help yourself. You feel right grumpy in the night, though, don't you, right? Rain or shine, all the time our families will bring. And it's the last one to Let them come, let them come, let them come. Let them come, let them come, let them come. Let and bang there we go 115 people keen to get going kev i'm back the wallpaper is back. I will apologise in advance for the madman. He is here. By popular demand, Kev, they do love you. Um, but um, they're not the ones that want to try and control you for the next two hours. How you been, mate? Yeah, been good, mate. Been good. Been eagerly watching the uh, transfer news at Millwall. Been down there for the fixtures release with uh, Steve Kavanagh and a few of the other people. And they were very, very surprised at them fixtures because the fixtures we've got is a bloody hard start to the season. And at that point, we'd lost Jed. And there was nothing coming in the door. And I said to Steve Kavner, you have got to pull something big out of the bag here or we're, we're going to be a shit show this year. But in all mm. fairness, I've got to say, I've been very impressed with the business Mill have done and the recruitment they've done in the positions they've done it as well. Very, very good bit of business. In fact, it's almost like Jed who in my mind now. Mm. And, but when he left, I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Especially going to West Brom and Jalby because I do the match sponsoring against West Brom. And to see them every week saying to me, Jed's done this, Jed's done that, Jed's done this. It's a bit of a, it's a double kick in the balls, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, and you say, like, there was at one point, there was people posted on um, social media stuff like, at least, I think at this point, Zampa the Lion might even leave and join Colchester Zoo, like, last one out, turn the lights <laughs> off. But in a very quick turnaround, people are very, very confident in the comments. Um, H will be joining us shortly. And I think you might have to shoot off and then you're going to come back out a bit later on. But there is plenty to get through, mate. So There's loads. If you haven't, There's loads. everyone, get yourself a drink. Get what you got to get what you need for the next maybe around two hours. Good numbers in already, nearly 200 people. And I was expecting this tonight because as you said, it's been a it's been a whirlwind and very unmill wall like last couple of weeks, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Oh God. I mean, if you if you just look at the, the signing of Fleming, I mean we look so heavy up top now. You know, you've got Fleming, Bradshaw and a phobie. I mean, that's, that's compared to what some of the forward lines we had to put out last year. That's amazing. Yeah, there has been an early donation. So I'm going to thank Stephen Ball. Thank you very much, Stephen, for your donation. Super well, Chats are you. open. You can donate to the channel via the comment section, if you so wish. If not, not a drama. Sit back, enjoy the show. We've got a lot to get through. And in preparation for being the first live stream, I thought I might go old school tonight and get a. You're right, Kev. You, you're busy. <laughs> I might get, um, get just get the camera in the right position. <laughs> I might <laughs> I might go old school and get some uh, jam shed, but I thought 
Now I'm going to push the boat. I'm going to get some Chateau Neuf. But I didn't oh, have Chateau, Chateau Neuf. Chateau Neuf. Look at that. Chateau, Chateau Neuf. Chateau Neuf. Neuf. Yeah, so I, I didn't have that. So I got this. It's like a little bit of a Chateau Neuf substitute, if you like. It's like it's like the second best. But right. We've got a lot to get through. I weren't going to cover this because I don't want to dwell on the past. And we're very happy with what's going on going forward. But let's talk about Never a few of the departures. Keith and Beld. Was you surprised he left? He got offered a new deal. Didn't leave, did he? Uh, sorry, did I, leave. Didn't accept I, a new deal. I think he saw the writing on the wall. You know, with, with, with Honeywell coming in, you've got Savoy, you've got Leonard coming back, you've got Billy Mitchell who was kicking on leaps and bands. His days were numbered. He was even even a substitute, possibly, for a, for a League Cup game. So, I'm not surprised. I've enjoyed him being down the den. He's been a Millwall kind of player. I've enjoyed yeah. him. I think the one bad thing in his armoury was when, against Birmingham away, we needed to win. Billy Mitchell was absolutely on fire. He dropped Billy Mitchell and put Clifton Veld in, who they knew all about. They knew he was a bit leggy. And we left their best player out. And I think that put a bit of a bad a bad vibe around him towards the end of his Millwall career. Because I think he's done pretty well. He put mm. the challenge in a few times and broke things up last year when we were not even getting any foothold in a game at all. And he no. put his foot in, just broke things up. I think he's, he's a good player. I think if we'd got him sort of like four years earlier, I think he would have been a different thing <laughs> together for us. Fucking dog. Anyway, yeah, no, do you know what? I'll make you right there because... I thought Keith the Bell was, was really good for us. Start of last season, I thought he was one of our best players. But I felt that, that, that the, his age crept in and the pace bypassed him very, very quickly. By the end of the season, it looked like he was sort of, it was a level above him, didn't it? He looked very leggy. He looked very well, like out of you don't, We don't want to... You're, you're right in what you say. Don't dwell on what... You know, he was a good servant to the club. He came in at a time when we needed a bit of experience. We needed a bit of kickballer and bite, a bit of Millwallness. And he did well. So Keith the Bell leaves the club. Uh, we also had Alex Pierce leave the club, right? And Very Conor Mahoney. About was that, that one. They was out of contract, Pierce and Mahoney. Pierce has gone to Wimbledon. Conor Mahoney, I see someone stand there in the comments that um Conor Mahoney joins joins um, Huddersfield one day. The next Carlos Colbert and their manager resigns. I don't think there's anything to do with Conor Mahoney, but um <laughs> it's the Conor factor. <laughs> I, I thought it, I thought it was a good move for him, and I think a lot of people were surprised. He got that move. When you, where did you stand on Mahoney's time at the den? Right, it's a very interesting subject. It I've is. always been a big fan of Conor Mahoney, and I don't think he got enough opportunities. I don't know whether Rowett didn't like him or he just didn't fancy him. I think had he got more game time when he was fit, he would have made more of an impact. He, he was, he was very much like Jed. He could get the ball at his feet, and he could do things that. A lot of the other players in the team couldn't do, but he never got a good run in the side. And he was injured. And I think he just wasn't very... He wasn't in favour. Where it wasn't in favour of him, therefore he never got a look in. But I think I think he's a good addition to any team. A good addition to any side. And I think that he will do well. Wherever he goes, he will do well. But he needs to run in the side. He needs the right players to be playing around him. And the way that Millwall set up last year was not a Conor Mahoney formation. It, yeah, it just wasn't. He, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bit of a luxury player. And in the way that Rowett plays, he's got no luxury players because the people he's got going forward have to be like Jed-esque, a phobie. They have to be clinical and make those chances and opportunities count because he believes in not letting a goal in. So, therefore, he wants you to hit them on the break. He wants you to make an opportunity where most the majority of the time your back's against the wall and you're defending, but you create by, by quick breaking away quick like Jed would do. Sometimes Jed used to break away that quickly. He used to look around and go, where's everyone else? Mm. You know, and, and I think Connor Mahoney, had he been in that kind of side and that formation, he could have he could have really helped Jed out and he could have got 15 goals a year and, and took us a bit further up the league. But I think the game signified it at Bournemouth away. We went down there in high hopes, great support. We were still in the shout. But anyone that went to that game will say that Millwall, yes, we lost 1-0, but we were totally out of our depth there in terms of pushing towards the Premiership. And, you know, had we get, got to the Premiership and then playoffs, we would be in a situation where we would go down with a record amount of points. 
because the squad wasn't good enough, nowhere near it. But the fairy tale was still there going into the last game of the season. And Rowett has to be given credit for that. And I think, I, I like, as you know about me and Rowett, we're, I don't see eye to eye to him when I see him. He told me he was going to eat, eat, eat all these different things. I don't always see eye to eye. I don't get on with him. I've had my words with him, you know, in, in the corporate things. But I've got to say, and I hold my hands up when I'm wrong, the pre-season transfer and business he's done and the training they've done over in Ireland is second to none. And with the budget we've got, hats off to him. And I really think, I was dreading Stoke at home first game of the season. I'm relishing it now. I agree, mate. Right, there's, there's lots to talk about tonight and there's lots of people getting involved in the chat. So um, we'll cover everything, but obviously don't comment on something that has or hasn't happened yet. And obviously right. I can't read your fucking comment. No, no, I'm them as so I'm saying. Can't read their comments otherwise. Um, mixed reviews in there on... Um, what, the wallpaper? On No, good reviews for the wallpaper. Connor Murray, right. For the audio viewers, H is in the stream. It's a little bit dark, but he's in. All right, mate? You all right, H? All right, let's hang on one second. Just a second, how you doing? You in, mate? You good? Yeah, not too bad, all right? Yeah, you two seem a bit quiet. Maybe I'm just going deaf. Hey? Not <laughs> past three. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what all, it's what all she's eat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, yeah, we're just covering quickly, H, the players that have gone yeah, and the, and the situation we was in where people were saying, last one out, turn the lights off. So, Keith and Bell, Pierce and Mahoney, we've covered. Uh, Zach Lovelace, of course, left and went to Rangers. No surprises there for me. H? Uh, not if a club that big comes calling for you. I mean, wrongly or rightly, massive, right? Big move. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, mate. That's it. That's better. And then finally, the Jeb Wallace, the man, the main man. I found this picture earlier. I hadn't even seen it before. But that hurts a little bit less now than it did three weeks ago. Will we agree on that one? Yep. Yeah, so that's what I said to you, Dan, when, it, when the fixtures come out and he'd gone, I thought, oh, my God, it's going to be a, a long first two months of the season and nil poids. Two weeks later, I feel we've got a squad to compete for the top six. That is the Neil, difference in turnaround. Neil, Neil Poir, I love that. Right, so then that was all. That was all the bad. That was oh my god, we might as well not even bother. And Will <laughs> Rowett style won't he stay because he hadn't signed a contract at that point, which we'll cover in a minute. But then out of nowhere, and usually I'm not going to claim the Ollie Burke one. I, I hear whispers, <laughs> I hear things. I heard absolutely nothing about the Bermondsey Burke camp. First and foremost, let's get his name right because I said it was Zion. And people were saying, it's not Zion, it's Zayn. So I started saying Zayn, and other people were saying it was Zion. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Zion Fleming, but regardless of what his name is, we're going to break our transfer record. Believed to be £1.7 million. I don't know why, but I would have liked it to have been more than that. I thought we, I heard it was like two odd million, and then it gets, gets reduced to one seven. All right, the club spent less money, but... I've heard reports from Holland that he's a very good player and a complete striker. Yeah, it's a difficult one because it's like he's been playing up front for them. He scored the goal that kept uh, Fortuna sit hard up on the last day of the season. But he isn't actually a striker. He can play as a 10. He can play wide. 10, yeah. I just hope, I heard the interview with him, he said he prefers to play in a 10. I just hope Rowett finds that 10 for him. H, you're nodding. He's an interesting, he's young, isn't he? So I think the biggest thing here is potential because we don't really know. Because if you look at his stats, I've got here 90 odd appearances in the Erevid division or whatever it's called. Easy for you to say. Tw mate, no, <laughs> no, it's not. 26 goals, 11 assists. I mean, I looked at his, uh, look, I don't know anything about the bloke, right? But I know two things. Number one, if you watch his highlights reel, he likes to score outside the box and he scored quite a few Tim Cahill style headers last season. Second thing is he was the only player outside PSV, Feyenoord and Ajax to make the Dutch Premier League team of the year. So, uh, you know, that's what I think. I mean, I've seen a few people on Twitter, um, a, 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 one of our Dutch mates who reckons we paid over the odds for him for, for what he's worth. He reckons that the, that the Dutch Premier Division isn't worth much outside the top four or five, six teams. And some of those teams wouldn't probably survive in the championship. But 
Do you know what? It's the type of player that we, as a football club, have to take a punt on. Who else are we going to get in? Genuinely, you know. And so if he does turn out at 23 to be an absolute worldie, well, you know, he'll be worth five, six, seven, eight million, won't he, in a few years? And as long as we don't stuff his contract up like we did with Jed Wallace, he's got to be a sound investment. Yeah, I, I, I've said in videos before that we have to go a certain way these days. You know, even the non-league players, the Gems, the Morrisons, the Gregories that we picked up, we can't. you ain't going to pick them up for the money you used to. And no one in the division above is going to want to sign for us. So you, 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 unless you grow your own talent, you've got to look abroad. And that's exactly what they did, Kev. Yeah. Have you met yeah, the Burmese think... Bird Camp yet, Kev? I just... About what, sorry? Have you met him yet? I haven't met him yet, no. I've not met him. I will do very soon. I'm, I mean, to, I mean, I just keep thinking to myself, yeah, when's it going to go wrong? Let's hope we don't break his leg on the first game. I want to see him put some solid performances in and actually see what he can really do. Because I, I, I do believe from what I've heard from Holland, he's what we need. Yeah, and if I'm you put, if you put, if you put him in there with a phobie and Bradshaw, that is a formidable front three. That, that front three has got potentially 45, 50 goals between them. And that's something that Mill have never had before. Because if you're backing it up with Honeywell, Billy Mitchell, Honeyman, Travel. Honeyman, yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking of the people that do the um, alarms or whatever it is. No, he, <laughs> George, yeah, I've heard from Sunderland players. He's a great player. Honeyman, great player. Yeah. I've heard of a lot of people that they were very surprised we got him. He opted to come to us. We've actually got people come to us who want to play for us. Yeah, and that's, that's a big right. thing. That, that's the that's thing as well. Like, thing. We usually get, you know, people that are journeymen, journeymen or we couldn't get the ones that we wanted. So we've gone for a second or third or a fourth choice. But it's, it, these players now, you know, Honeyman's uh, going to get me out of here. Honeyman has come to us like saying he wants to play <laughs> Premier League football. I, I love I love the intent. I don't really understand where Rowett's going to play him if we've got Fleming. and Because they look to me like they, they play... When you look at the lineups and how they lined up last season, they looked to me to play in the same position. So he was playing at 10 at Hull, right? Just like, you know, in a sort of Jed wallish position. He's not prolific in terms of goals he scored. If you look at his stats, I don't, you know, but like you say, everyone said he's a good player. Everyone said that he's, you know, can't all be wrong. He's got a potential to, to, to be, you know, that sort of individual for us. But I don't understand where he's going to play him if Fleming's going to start. That would be my one question. I don't know. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, it's a good head, mind you, H. It's a good head, yeah, but it's the, worry, the worry for me is, it, look, I, from the players he's bought, I can't see how he can still play the same formation last season as last season. And that's that was my other question. He's got his sure because we got, the, the we, so we got a lot to change, you know. And I heard Fleming say in, in, in his interview that he said, I, I prefer to play on a 10, but I can play wide. And I, I read into that that he's already been tapped up that you're going to be on the fucking right side of the strike of the front three, which I, hopefully we don't do, you know. And, and hopefully I'm wrong, but uh, say two, two because, very, very uh, good signings. Yeah. Do you think that that does, does that? So, just sorry, just one last question. Do we sure, think mate. that that means that we're going to stick a phobia up top again with him and Bradshaw like <gasps> flank? I mean, I've got a feeling he'll play a phobia left side of striker, oh, Bradshaw geez, central, that. Fleming at 10, and Billy Mitchell and Honeyman um, in, I, a, in, the, in the midfield too. So, no room for George Savile. Uh, well, look, Ooh. the thing is, we've got this season, um, and what I think. I think why he's gone extra on the squad this season, he said in the week as well that we want another two or three players in. We had a lot of injuries last season. We seem yeah. to get affected by injuries more than anyone. Now, you can have seven substitutes on a bench, on the bench, five of which you can bring on this year. So I think you're going to see wow. a lot of automation. You're, we know we'll okay. see injuries and suspension. So I think you've got, you know, I think you'll pick his team for Stoke. I was thinking this the other day. I saw a life I lead landing bed thinking to myself about the opening day against Stoke. I think he's going to pick that team for Stoke and I think he'll say, look, I'm picking this team for Stoke. I don't think that you're better than you or you're better than you. I've just picked the team which I think will get the job done against Stoke. And I think you'll see people come in and others go out, even if they've had good games. 
or even if off their back of a suspension, they might come straight back in. Oh, I think he's fair, looking, he, we need he a lot like of to, depth. Yeah, sure. Interesting that he does like to do that. And I, and I think back to games like, and I didn't necessarily agree with this, but the Birmingham City game where all of a sudden Billy Mitchell's on the bench and we've got Clifton Bell back in the side. And I was like... We touched on this earlier, didn't we? Uh, yeah. You know, so he does, he does like to rotate and have those options and George Evans and people and bring them in at random times. So what he's done is he's strengthened a lot of these positions and now we've got like quality more quality in depth because the other question i've got when i was trying to pick my team earlier that i sent you dan was where does tyler bury sit in this conundrum now right which is a that great problem bennett. to have mason bennett haven't even thought about him right i mean you know so there's there's, there's a there's there's a lot of depth going forward there my one concern would be currently at the back and the depth that we've got at centre back and that's why I think it was crucial that we brought Cresswell in because we needed someone with um, pace right we need someone with a bit more pace a bit more now and Coops and Hutch didn't start that many games together last season with Ballard in the three that I think he wanted to play because of injuries each one of them's picking up knocks here and there they've got they're carrying stuff from one season to the next they're getting a bit older so um yeah, it's good, but I still think we potentially need another person there. I know Murray Wallace can come in and do the job, but then we're a bit light for cover with Scott Malone. I think he's, you know, he didn't have as good a season last year as he did the one before. So, yeah, great headaches. Really good. Yeah, he's a good headache to have. And um, Kev, just saying there, I was thinking, it's like someone said he's getting like a more like a rugby mm-hmm. set up. And I was saying to my mate the other day, back in the day, if you weren't playing in a team, you'd be fuming. You'd say, why the fuck am I not playing? But the, the players seem to accept it. It's very widely accepted now. Like, you know, I might not play for five weeks and they'll come in. I mean, look at Bradshaw. He didn't play for absolutely fucking ages under Rowett. Now he's in and, and pretty much our top scorer along with a phobie. Um, You know, it's, it's a very different game in this day and age. And, and you do need more players. And the, the players seem to accept that there'll be points when, when they won't play. So that's two good signings. Well, all right, let's rate the signings then. Out of 10, what are you saying about Fleming? I know you, we haven't seen a lot of him. But excitement factor. What, I'll go what eight. I'll go. I'll go eight out of ten. I think for me. Yeah, I'd say same, Kev. Um, I'm. I am. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go seven. I'm gonna go seven on this. The reason being, it's the hype factor. I've seen so many times, like when Bradshaw first come in, he's gonna be the new Gregory, and it never materialised. I want to see how he get, he fares in the first. Well, one yeah. in the preseason friendlies, and two, how he and what where he fits into the squad. I think, like Hate said, where is he going to go in that team? Where he's where, 23, though. The fact, Kev, I agree with you, but I do like the fact that he's 23. Yeah, I like, I like the fact he's young, he's got a lot, a lot of potential to come on there, and he's progressed very quickly in his career. He hasn't, you know, he's gone in, done a year at wherever he was before sit hard, NEC, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that's NEC, it. Yeah, yeah. Went, went to sit hard, two strong years, and he's on the move yeah. again. And he's definitely, you know, he's got ambition, etc. Hasn't he? Once, once to play in England, I think. Yeah, but I think Dan. The, the, I mean, I know. I hate to speak about this so early in his Millwall career. Yeah, the good thing about what Millwall have done here is, if he does it the ground running, and he has two, three good seasons, gets us a Premiership, gets us playoffs, wherever, and he progresses into a twenty million pound striker, and we sell him, that is a fantastic bit of business. The money that can be reinvested into the squad. In two to three years, like I say, I, I apologize to the fans for saying for mapping out how it's going to happen, but that is the business we are in. 20 million pound turnaround in, in that kind of transfer is two years' turnover for Millwall in one deal. It is massive. I, I think I, I, Kev, I completely agree with you, and I think that it could, if it goes that way, everyone talks about the Brentford model without understanding that actually there was quite a lot of investment in players like Ivan Tony, and they got that money through, first of all, using a, a scouting model that no one had used previously and, and getting in some key players and selling them on for a bit of a profit and then using that profit to bring in someone like Tony who cost them five million quid. And this is exactly what we need to do with someone like Fleming. We we wanted him earlier in, like earlier in last season. Now we've brought him in. We've brought in Honeyman, who's a good, um, you know, addition. We've got Cresswell, all right, he's only on loan, um, and I don't think that um, that that he's going to. Um, he's definitely not going to sign for us, is he? Because I mean, you know, he's, he's played England under twenty ones a couple of games for them, so he's got obviously like a lot going forward for him. Um, and it's just a, a case of, of of us trying to exploit that as much as we can, and and not being funny, make the playoffs next year. 
Yeah. Mm. We, we, we've given a we've given a little rating for a Fleming an eight eight and a seven. A few people giving him nines in the comments. Let's talk just about Honeyman just quickly because I said I watched the interview with um, Fleming. Also watched the one with uh, Honeyman because I couldn't I couldn't work out what his best position was. And he said I do a bit of everything. I go box to box. I like to get stuck in. Is he a little bit of a, a higher standard Ben Thompson maybe? He's a that's higher the sense standard. I'm getting. Positionally, that's the sense I'm getting that the sort of player that he is. And that's not a bad thing. That's not an insult to either of the players. But definitely, you know, I've got a sneaky feeling that he could end up being our best signing, Honeyman. I don't know why. Just got a little sneaky feeling. What do you boys think? He's in the Leonard mould, in my opinion. He's a higher end. Is that a bad thing? No, but <laughs> what I mean by, what I mean by that higher end. He's a, high, he's, a, he's a higher end. He's a utility man in an attacking option, but the high end of that bracket, I think he can play multiple roles up there. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I don't know enough about him to no. really say. But from all I've done today is watch some YouTube clips of him, right? And I've looked at what people have rated him as, and there are far more positives than negatives. I can only cross-reference that with what I've heard from one of my Dutch mates on Twitter who was like, we've paid way too much for him. And they said the contextual stuff that I said, I'd like to be more... Um, optimistic this season and say, actually, look, he's the kind of player that, yes, we need to take a punt on. But as we've all agreed, it's the type of player that we just need to do that. You know, other other fans from other clubs, when I've spoken to them, a Forest fan and a few other people, because, you know, I, I, I do that for no look, um, have all said, yeah, actually, we've done some really sensible business this transfer window. And they think, you know, we could be a dark horse going into the season. And I've got to agree with that, to be honest with you. Mm. It's, that, that is an opinion, Dan, that is very widely spread between not only mere wall fans, but I've got Sunderland mates, whole city and a few other West Bromness. And they've all said, they think mere wall are going to be the dark horse this year. They're going to be that team that just might sneak into that top six with the, with the unknown entity that is, that is Fleming. And he mm. might just surprise people. And if he does, yeah. we don't, I think, I think, I think Dan, I think the way you've got to look at it is, I think we're top half of the season this year. I think we've solidified the way we play in our, in our position and we are now a top... We're considered to be a top half championship side. The now thing is to move to the next level and get in that top six. It is exciting and it is all good making these signings and I'm not taking anything away from, from the club. But I did think the other day, I'm like, oh, we're getting excited, all these signings. A phobia which we'll get onto next. He's come back. So the minute we sign three... But everyone's signing six, seven, eight players. So we're not like... And, and Rowley did say that. He said he said we're having to do what we're doing to stay in the game and maybe give ourselves a chance. I just think, myself included, maybe a little bit too excited at the minute because I think Cardiff... I mean, there is, there is potentially, of course, you could buy too many fucking players, which, which Neil Harris did, didn't he, back in the back in the day, book 10. But like Cardiff have booked nine players. Teams are buying players left, yeah. right and centre. So it's brilliant we're doing so. But are we, I don't feel we're getting ourselves ahead of the game, are we? Dan, I'll say, I'll say, look, I'll say another thing as well is, is last season the thing that cost us the playoffs was our away form. We had the second best or the joint best home form, right? If we can continue that at the den and make it a hostile place to come to and do everything we've always done throughout the years, because the season before that, during COVID, remember we had this conversation, you know, we had one of the worst home records and you really felt that when the fans came back, we had to exploit it. Now, Gary got that right last season. Where yeah. we didn't get it right was on the road and we started doing stupid things at places like Birmingham, Peterborough, yeah. you know, those games at Blackpool. Do we even go back to that oh. nightmare? But, you know, oh. all I'm saying no, is mate, we're running. The wallpaper wants to turn off now. You oh, mentioned no. Blackpool. I know, kid. But, but, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we were only two points off and we're usually stronger than that away from home. And I think the injuries cost us. And so, you know, if we can, if we do pick up a couple of injuries this season, we have got quality players who have played championship football over a consistent number of seasons to come in and get the job done. They're not bit part players. And, you know, with all due respect to George Evans and Ryan Leonard, that's what I see those individuals as. Um, but like I said, the defence for me is a bit like if Danny Mack gets injured, what we're going to do? I mean, maybe we could bring back some of the other, you know, Loney's, uh, Muller or someone mm. like, you know, I don't know where they're going to line up or maybe they've got one of those blokes coming through. I'm not sure. But yeah, that that would be my only concern. I think going forward, we look OK. Yeah, I agree. Mick, thank you very much, mate, for your kind donation. Super Chats. Well, 
Um, wow. Let's talk about our next signing. Sorry, I, I've given Fleming an eight. I'm going to give Honeyman an eight point five. Just on really just controversial. I just think he's going to do. I don't know what it is. I just think he's going to do the business. What do you think, um, boys? Rating wise, go on, go on H. Again, I can only like I can only go on the games. So he played in the game, didn't he? Against us, we beat him two one at the end of last season. So I can only go on that. And I wasn't really paying attention to his performance, but he didn't seem to really stand out for me in any way. No. He was very look. He's, he's played uh, forty two games, forty two games, forty two games in uh, nine in two thousand nineteen twenty. He's played forty two games in twenty twenty one. He's played thirty five games last season. So he's a consistent first name on the team sheet. Championship player. All right, one of those was actually League One when they got promoted. But you know, same sort of thing. I in that time he scored five ten goals in a hundred and something matches. Now maybe that's not what he's coming in, but if he's been playing in that regular number ten role, that's not outstanding. But maybe he'll be played in a different, he'll be given a different role within this side to go on and, and, and do that. And I think one of the things that we need to look at is, well, first of all, we need to replace the goals that Jed Wallace scored last year. If we can keep Bradshaw fit and he can get five or six more, then that'll take him up to 15. If we could get a phobie to just match what he did last season and maybe put away some of those other goals... You know, and then Fleming comes in. I think, Dan, you said at the beginning of last season we were going to be roughly 10 goals short. You thought we'd be 10 goals short. And actually, I think we were probably, because of the nature of the season, we were only probably five goals yeah, shy well, of making like, a point. I hope being Bradshaw surprised me. But like, just, just for like a, a stats aside, like heart on your sleeve, gut feeling, how well do you think Honeyman's going to do for us? And how excited are you that he's here? Yeah. 7.58. Yeah, I think it's the same sort of thing. He's a really solid sign. He's 27 years old. Yeah, I'm annoying. You're, you yeah, I just I don't know what it is. I just got that feeling, which I've got, usually I've goes got fucking wrong. Feeling, I've got a good feeling. I know, I know a bit about him from Sunderland and Hull City supporters, and they're both gutted to have lost him. There is not many players that you can say that about, and I think he's going to hit the ground running and be a Millwall type of player with a bit of flair. So, and, so whoever, whoever just put that in, the, I agree with you. Sorry, whoever just put that in the chat. That might well be, but last, I'm just telling you, he's been playing number 10. He's been playing 10 for Hull. He had the number 10 shirt. He's been playing in that position just behind the back one up front. So, yeah. He's, he's, again, like going back to what we said earlier, that's the worry for like, not the worry because they're good players and they're better players than we've gone after in previous years. But we signed two number 10s back to back. That's the one where like, I thought we was in for Burke. I was like, hang on, what's going on? Two defenders, then, not usually. Yeah. Well, let's, let's move on to the next signing. I'm just going to check my dinner. Yeah, this is very second. random. Kev, let's start with you on this one. Benica Fobi returns to the club. That was just chaos, Ooh. wasn't it? He, was, he joined, he joined uh, you know, a, an agreement with uh, Bruges. He was going to play in Champions League football. Allegedly. Belgian champions, three years running, reigning champions. Then his move broke down, but he'd agreed personal terms. But I think Andy Carroll was also going there and his move broke down. So I don't know something to do with a the way the clubs run. He was in a nightclub. That's where he got caught in a nightclub. He got chucked out there, Andy Carroll. He spends really? more time on the injury list than he does anything else. <laughs> Training room injuries must be next to his name. He's always... He, he, he just can't behave himself, Carroll. Carroll no. is a... Look, give me, don't get me wrong, Dan. Carroll is a fantastic player. And in the air, Andy Carroll is unplayable. Yeah? But he cannot behave himself. Therefore, he ruins his whole ability. Now, a phobie is exactly the same with me. When he's switched on and he wants to, be, he wants to, I've, I've watched him train Dan with a team. He's, he's got class, he's good, he's got quick feet, but it's whether he can be bothered sometimes. And I think with the addition of Fleming, he hasn't got to do the running that he would have had to have run before, which, he made, which made him look lazy to us, but it wasn't in his game. Now he's got the two others that can run. It might free him up just to be a bit more of a fox in the box. Because yeah. he's got to put a bit away. He has got to put away a few more of those easier chances. He missed yeah. a hell of a lot of easy chances last year that could have won us games. I agree, I agree. And, and he's got to be a bit more clinical in that box. And with Fleming and Bradshaw, I think it's going to free him up a bit more. I think yeah. he's going to be freed up to do that role. Rather than being asked to chase around everywhere, which clearly is the game, is it? Yeah, I'm going to pick on a couple of things that you said, Kev, because I agree with all of them. Um, 
the, the running, right? People we were saying the phobia was lazy. And I wasn't even his, his biggest fan, but I don't think I just think he doesn't go running because he's a centre forward and he wants to score goals. Mm-hmm. And, he, and like you said, that, that wasn't in his game, does he? Does he go running channels? And I always say you centre forward, stay central, he scores goals. I know football's evolved, but I agree with that. But you, were you excited for um I think a lot of fans were fussed about a phobia, but then he I'm went I'm glad to have him back. I'm glad to I think he adds something. It, it, you know, he's attracted a lot of Watford, he's attracted Bruges, he's attracted a few bigger clubs that to me that shows that he's got something. He's got something. And Millwall, he, you know, he, he, he had a, if you if you think he had an, an all right season and he scored nearly 15 goals, I'd like to see what he'd do if he had a good season, which he, which he ended very well. So why yeah. not take off very well the start of next season? He knows the players more now, he knows the fans, he knows what we expect. Look how he celebrated the goal, the penalty at Birmingham. It was like he won the Champions League. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that passion from our players on the pitch. But if we want to see a phobie run box to box, chasing things to the halfway line, it's not going to happen. We want to see him in the box taking that one opportunity that he gets given. Mm. Stephen Ball's glad we got Penny back. Cheers, Stephen. Thank you very much for the donation. Very much appreciated. But I think a lot of the fans weren't fussed. Then he left, and then when we got him back, everyone's now like, fucking hell, we got Benick back. But you can't argue with his goal return, H, can you? And it's, it's a good signing. Uh, no? Phil? Well, I, I, again, I, I had this I argument with, some, with, with, with someone on WhatsApp. He scored 12 goals last season in the league, which, same as sort of a league regularly type player, but without the work rate, and he can't hold the ball up as well, in, in, in my opinion. Now, yeah. Who else are we going to bring in if he doesn't come back to us? We'd have a massive gaping hole there. We'd have to spend funds elsewhere. And everything you said, Kelly, is absolutely on the money. He knows the football club. He's one of the nicest blokes as well. I've, you know, I met him at that sponsor's day. What a nice guy. He's yeah, got he's an there. amazing... Yeah, he's he was there with he's, he's, yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah got, I'll, he's I'll got... be honest. I couldn't give a fuck if he's a nice bloke or he isn't. As long as he scores his goals. That's, yeah. that's, why to, that's why I used to love Steve Morrison. Everyone used to hate Steve Morrison because he used to go, fuck off, don't talk to me. I, I don't care. As long as, he, as long as he's banging goals in, he can run around in his pants all day if he wants. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, I, look, look, I think that he, maybe because he hadn't played as much, he started last, oh, he got he got four, he got two in his first four games or something like that. So he started okay. We then had a middle period of the season where he went through a goal like one every five games and he missed a few sitters. Yeah, real uh, the one against Forest screams oh. at me. But then but then the Forest game after that, yeah, he went on a good run of scoring and, and Huddersfield. And and he, he he I mean some of his finishes like yeah Huddersfield, West Brom, he showed how good he can be. Now if he it's can convert late. that kind of if he can start the season in that kind of form of scoring those sorts of goals you know, that's going to be brilliant. And he has got a good rapport with Bradshaw. And if Bradshaw can stay fit, you know, they got between them last season something like... 23. What was it? Yeah. yeah, goals. Yeah, 22, yeah. 23 goals between them as a, as a strike partnership. Um, well, hopefully, you know, if they can just get three or four more goals each, then that becomes one of the best strike partnerships in, in the championship. Yeah, because, I mean, most of them last season, with the exception of Mitrovic and... That Cavalio geezer up front that scored about nine. Who's got to Liverpool goals, now? But that's it. Um, exactly. And this, this is what we're playing against our season. Most of the other teams come in, their strike partnerships are getting between around 33, 34, 35 goals between their, their front, like top, top ones. Um, so that's what we've got to be looking for. And if we can make that up with the three, then that's fantastic. I mean, my, my one concern is, is that, you know, Jed Wallace kicked in with double figures as well. And we need to replace that. So hopefully Fleming can do that. We can get the same return from those two guys yeah. and we'll get people like Bennett chipping in with some and, and those other individuals. But yeah, you know, do you know what? F- fair play. He knows the football club. He knows what's expected. He he does always try his best. And I think sometimes he didn't get the service. So I used to say it's about Bradshaw. So I can't then not say this about Phoebe. He didn't always get the service that suits his game the best. And when he did get yeah, that agreed. service, he was a lot more clinical and looked a better player. Mm-hmm. So yeah, welcome back, Benny Phoebe. Seven out of 10 signing for me. Fair play. Yeah, again, Steve, I think Steve Lee said it a few times in the comments last year that 
a phobic miss is the ones that he gets too long to think about. He actually scores the harder chances. And I, I said that Bennett kicked on from me from the from the Crystal Palace game. And and I, again, I watched the old real pumping money into the club at a minute with his recast that. But his interview, he said after Christmas, he felt personally kicked on and he got to know, you know, the, the understanding of his teammates more and the runs they needed him to make, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm giving big bad Bennett. I'm being generous tonight. I'm going to give Bennett as well. I can't give him an eight because I'm more excited about Fleming, but I'm going to give him a 7.5 because we know what we're getting with him. And I'm just talking excitement to see him play in the middle shirt again and how well I think he'll do out of 10 as a whole. Yeah. What do you reckon, Kev? Rate I've, him. I've, a phobie, you know, on what I've seen of him, what I've seen him, how I've seen him train, how I know what he's like as a person and that he actually does care about what he does for Millwall. He wants to score goals. I think with the two players giving him a bit more of a freer roll up top to get the ball in the back of the net rather than chase it, I think he's going to get more goals mm. and I think he's going to be a nine. I really think that that top three, if stay fit, if form some sort of good chemistry up there, they have got between 40 and 55 goals in them between them. And that kind of return is what we're after. Because then that takes the pressure off the midfield, which used to be Jed, to score the goals. Now, if they if they chip in with about ten more goals, then that's then between them, if not twenty, you're now staring down a barrel of seventy five goals, eighty goals in a season. Now that's got to be the form of a team that's going to push in towards the top six. It has to be. And like I said, I think we are a solid top half of the table now. Therefore. Mm. With the additional firepower that we've got this year now, I'm not worried at the back. I know that we can keep balls out the back of the net. I was worried about creativeness in midfield, people pushing on from midfield and up front. When Jed went, I thought, oh, shit, what the fuck are we going to do? Can I can I have my season ticket back? Now I've got these these options going forward. I think that, I think the chairman and Rowett have done pretty well. And if we get one of the other players in, like the bloke from Aberdeen, Ferguson, he's not, he's not yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. happen. But look, Steve's saying there, right? A phobie scored more once we played in a t played a 10, and that's just jogged my memory. He started playing Ojo in a 10, didn't he? Behind Bradshaw and a phobie, and, st and he started doing really well, but then he got injured. So maybe, you know, maybe he does want to play a 10, maybe he hasn't got the players to do it, and that's why he's been out and bought, bought um, Fleming and Honeyman. There's Amen. a Fortuna Sittard. Fan in the chat, by the way. Thanks for tuning in, mate. He said, "Put Zion on, and he'll give you fifteen plus goals and eight plus assists." See that? There, mm. there he is. There, Dan. The assists he brings to the table, as well as the goals, that is the key here. That is yeah. the key. He will. Well, look, I, I'm all for it, and I'm backing him, and I love him already. But this, it's, it's a different animal. Our, our division to the one he's been playing in, you know. But look, let's Can move be... on. A, a phobie, seven point five. How excited are you to see him back in a Millwall shirt, H? And how well do you think he's going to do this season out of 10? I think, I think I've already answered that. I think, I hope he does. If, if he could get up to 15 goals, that would be mega. I mean, look, I think he's the type of player that, like, genuinely, do you know what? If he... If he just has a bit more confidence and starts putting away the chances like he did in the second half of that season, then we've got a 20-goal striker there. Like, I can see how he's a 20-goal striker because he had he, he he had gifted opportunities to get that many goals, right, I, in my opinion, and he scored some of the more difficult ones. So, you know, that that's that's what we're going to need. We're going to need an exceptional season from one of these front three men to, to fire us into the playoffs. So I'm hoping he'll be an eight. But my gut's telling me a, a, a seven, much like last season. Okay, what do you think out of, uh, out of 10? Out of 10? Yeah, out of 10. How excited are you to see Bennett back? And how well do you think he's going to do? I, I, no, I just said to you, Dan, I think, no, I think it's a nine. I think he's going to get a freer roll up there. He's not going to have to chase all those lost causes, Dan, like he did last year. And I think that he will chip in with 15 to 20 goals a year. Now, if you, if you build that alongside potentially what the other two can do, Bradshaw, you've got a very strong strong forward line. And I feel that we've got a, now got a midfield as well that can push behind. I think Rowett's tactics are completely changed. He's gone top heavy from the midfield upwards this season, where before every 
every other season has always been about don't let a goal in. Don't let a goal in. Let's play one up top and two and two wing backs. You know, it's, mm. it's never really worked for us. At home, we used to be under pressure. We were never under pressure at home. We used to attack sides. And that's where people got frustrated. So I think the signings that he's made is an intent to think, well, well we've signed a three-year deal. Rowett knows full well that this is now, you must think that this season, we're going to kick on. He wouldn't have signed another deal if he didn't think we were going to. And he signed it early. Because October, I think the contract was up. So he signed it early. No, I'm, yeah. I'm understanding that he thinks that, that they backed him. And he thinks that they backed him to the hills here. They've got suppliers in that can do the business. He's not got the budget he had at um, Derby or Birmingham or Stoke. But I think with the budget he's got and the players he's watching, I think he's, I've got to say, shrewd bit of business off of Gary Rowett. Very, very shrewd. He's building what I would consider to be a solid team with attacking, with attacking intent. We're going to get on to Rowett's contract in a minute, Kev. I know you touched on it there. But before we yeah. do that, we're going to talk about the fourth signing so far, Charlie Creswell. Quality now, player. again, I know show reels can be painted in a good light, but this guy looks like he's fucking ne absolute next level. He looks better than Ballard. He looks better than Beckenbauer there on, on the board of battle. This is doing step overs, both feet. Um, the only the only gripe for me was, you know, it's going to be another Daniel Ballard situation where we're, we're not going to sign this player at the end of this contract. Someone said to me, look, like Kev just said, for once we're actually strengthening up the top end of the pitch. So we might not have all the money. So we've got a loan again this year, but then next summer we can strengthen at the back. Obviously, the full, you know, the front end of the pitch was, was clearly the issue as opposed to the back end of the pitch where we don't concede a lot of goals. We've got good experienced players. He's a really good player, Creswell. But again, you know, he's going to be, he's already played in the Premier League and that's where he's going to end up going back to. Oh, Will he improve our team? Absolutely, yes. Is he going to help the youngsters that have been at the club for fucking five, ten years? Yes. They're playing his position? No. So where do we yeah. stand on this one, H? Good signing. Good, really, really shrewd, really shrewd yeah. signing. If you're spending the money up top and you, he knows that we needed to replace Dan Ballard, what I'm hoping, what I'm hoping, Dan, is that he is looking at the likes of Aidan Muller um, and the other boys that we had that are defenders who were out on loan last season. And he's thinking, OK, well, maybe we bring Cresswell in, but with a longer term view to trying to get some of these youngsters involved at the back so that we can, you know, have have that model that we that we need, which is to, to create young players that we can sell on for, for more money. Um, so that's what I'm hoping. But yeah, he's absolutely right. But, you know, I think yeah, like... Phil Coleman has, has mentioned this to me a few times. And he said that, you know, if Dan Ballard had come back and people were saying we should spend this, this, that and that on him. And I'm like, yeah, but he didn't have pace. And that left us at the back with no pace, no pace. Danny Mack, the only one with any pace at the back there whatsoever, really. Um, so, yes, yeah, so hopefully he's going to be a good player. And like, you know, I mean, yeah, he's played five Premier League games. He's played a lot of under 23s football. He's played England under 21s. He's got to have something about him. And like you said, the show reels, again, all, if you just go and look at it, lots of Leeds fans were slightly upset that he'd gone to us. But also, at the same time, we're like, if he can play there, he can play at Ellen Road. You yeah. know? I don't like, think there's anything against us. He, they, they genuinely thought, my yeah. mate who, who come on the channel, he, he thought he was going to be their third centre-back yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, well, that tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? That tells you all you need to know. We've replaced Ballard, who is... a who is a best of twenty threes for Arsenal with a with a third centre back that was going to be in a Premiership squad next year, you know, a, a club as big as Leeds. So that has got to show again great intent and great. Looks like a better player to me. But I think he's a better player than Ballard. Ballard to me was very good, but at times he looked clumsy. At times he looked leg worthy, leg weary. Sorry, he, he you know he was a bit slow. This Cresswell, he's got pace. And height and presence. He's, a, he's the real deal back there. And I was so surprised we got him mm. on top of the other quality players we've already brought in. I couldn't be happier with the transfer unless, like I said to you, we got the Ferguson in from Aberdeen. That would that would just I'll be I'll be doing cartwheels around Billericke. I would singing no one likes us in there with no clothes on. That happened. I really oh, would you know, that be a on the channel, mate. Surprise. There we are. But um this the thing with this um I love Ballard, great defender, great potential. He's only going to improve. He did well at Sunderland. 
But what I think Rowett wants and what he's never had, and as good as Bart is and as good as our defence is, he's never had that defender that can play out from the back. No, so they're brilliant 100%, players for us. 100%. 100%. They're Neil Harris players and they're, they're out and out defenders and they're fucking brilliant, all of them. Well, I love all, I love Coops, I love Hutch and Murray Wallace and Bart, but they can't play out the back. And Ballard's so, distribution wasn't great. And I think... So, I think Dude, Bar- Trisbo, no, he's gone and got something. I agree with Kev. I think he's going to be better than Ballard. Um, yeah. I um. So when we watched that, Kev, you was there. When we watched that open training session at the sponsors yeah. thing, you could see what Rowett was trying to do. And it's play it round the back three and then either pass it into the middle or go down one of the channels out the side. Yeah. And, they were kept, and they kept doing that. And what I noticed then the week at the weekend when we played Birmingham is the second thing started to go wrong. Instead of sticking to what they'd been practicing all week, they started hoofing the ball. Yeah. And that was coming from Hutch. No disrespect to him. Great servant for the football club. That was coming from Hutch. That was coming from Coops. And we didn't have that individual who was able, as you quite rightly say, Dan, to play it out from the back. And that's what Gary Rowett wants to do. And he's yeah. brought in now a baller that can do that, right? Uh, it's, well, he looks looks to me anyway, again, I can't say that I've got a massive history of looking at Cresswell, at Charlie Cresswell play, um, but he's young. This is his first taste of high-level football um, over a consistent period uh, in the Championship. So it'd be great to see how he gets on. But I think, I, you know, in my opinion, having watched... Do you know what? I'll be slightly controversial with Dan Ballard. I didn't think he was anything special yes he showed more composure on the ball and he had a really great physical presence right yes but it's not like when he played the goals dried up and we went on a 15 game run of not conceding anything and all right we never quite got the him coops and hutch at the back because there was always one of those out injured when he wasn't out injured himself but what i'm trying to say is i didn't think that I didn't think he was that exceptional that he stood head and shoulders above someone like Hutch. You tell me that he was head and shoulders better than Hutch. No, okay. that's that's a very fair comment. But my, my reply to that would be, that's his first season in the championship. Before that, he'd only played League One and he's very young. So I could see, I, know, I, I agree with what you're saying. The way I was going, let's get him, let's get him. You're right. He's not as good as I'm saying, let's go and get him, let's go and get him. But I'm looking again at the, at the potential going forward and the business side of things where... Like Kev said earlier, why not? If you know, Fleming does the business later down the line, that's how a full club survives. You know what I mean? If, Stephen if he stays Ball, fit, thank you though, very much, mate, for another donation. Very if, much appreciate it. Yes, yes, yes. But if he stays fit, like he had a prolonged period out and it looked like he was not going to play for us again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then there was some kind of medical miracle when he's come back. So he's had a relatively serious injury. And that for me, creates a lot of question marks. I mean, I know obviously, you know, medical things have changed stuff these days, but I'm just, yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. But, you know, it's good to have a bit of difference and controversy in here. I don't think he's as good as some people thought he was. I don't think he was that much better than Hutch. Coop's had an indifferent season last year, I know, but I still love the man. Yeah, I've got I've got a point on this, Dan. I was just thinking about this as uh, mate just talking, digesting what he was saying. What would we rather as mere Wolf fans, yeah? Ballard spend two million and he doesn't go any higher than what he does, or Cresswell on loan for a season and he gives us another dimension pushing forward in the league. No, what would you like spending less money and you're getting a better return? So as a bit from a business sense, I would yeah. say I like Ballard. When we were talking about two, three million spending on him, I was thinking to myself, I'd have rather spent that on a striker. I'd have rather spent that on a wing. Mm. So, if you can get players of Cresswell's quality on loan now, you don't need Ballard's. Ballard's Ballard's gone to Sunderland now. We'll see how good he really is in a poorer side. But we wouldn't have paid two, three million to get him. And I'm, he's rumoured to be on sort of 30, 40 grand a week at Sunderland. Now, we couldn't put him on 30, 40 grand a week. He wouldn't justify it. I think Millwall's wage structure, though it's low, it is very, very realistic to the ability of the player playing for the team rather than the player the ability of him playing the championship side and that's what seems to happen they they get they get they're they're from full and sort of premiership clubs that are still playing big money to get average players i mean Kev, if that's true kev i mean he's you know i, I mean to me i mean i mean obviously you know the, the rumors were that that benick a phobia at stoke was on 35 plus i've had that on good authority from a couple of people yeah. I reckon that was about what it was. So he's not going to be on that with us. 
but he'll probably be at the topper end of our way journey. A week. You've just said something there, Rach, that I wanted to pick up on, actually. Um, it just reminded me on Benick. I know we've covered Benick, but we said, oh, people got, we signed Benick. And obviously, as we know with the club, it's always undisclosed, blah, blah, blah. And my old man said to me, why have we only signed him for a year? And I said, I don't know, but I'm assuming he was going to Bruce. They're going to pay him big dough. And they've gone, look, what will Bruce pay you? And he's probably gone, that. And they've gone, we can't pay that. Right? And he's gone, well, I tell you, I'll get near that over a year and I'll play for a year. However, I did hear whispers that he still had a year left on his contract at Stoke. And we just took his contract over. That's what that's what I heard. So I'm not yeah. sure if we actually bought him from Stoke or we just took over his contract because they wanted him off the wage books. That's the very does, 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 any, heard. does anybody know what happened with the Bruges transfer? No. No, no, I take it it wasn't. I, no, I've got no idea. But I'm just saying, I'm no, taking it wasn't like one. a medical issue. But it just seemed like maybe they couldn't. Maybe it was a personal term. So you know, it's not to move. He's very family orientated man, and to move your whole family over to. He, he did to allude to. He did allude like to. He just decided it wasn't the right move for him and his family. But he'd yeah. agreed personal yeah. terms, like you said. Maybe they offered him a load of dough, and he went, "Look, I'm gonna have to go and do this." And then eventually, his missus probably, or him and his missus went. Look, is the money fucking that important? Do you know what I mean? People saying failed medical. I don't. I'm pretty sure he didn't fail a medical. Ballard failed a medical or two, I believe, but um, not a phobie. Right. So that's our four signings so far. That's going to lead me on to the next thing, which Kev touched on a minute ago, is the Gary Rowitz contract situation. That contract was on the table for a while. He hadn't signed it. I was calling him everything last season for not signing it, but I'm going to hold my hands up. And I'm going to say, I'm glad he didn't, because what I think Rowett did, in my mind, could be wrong, just an opinion. I think Rowett said, all right, well, how much money are you giving me next season to push this club forward? And I think they're probably going to be more anxious. You know, we're not sure sort of thing. And you go, well, look, I want X, otherwise I'm not fucking X, Y, and Z, otherwise I'm not signing this contract. And I think he didn't, what's a good term, H, for you? Not like, he didn't hold the club to ransom, but he, he played his cards at the right time, but in a good way. You know, not because I always get accused of digging right out, and I'm not. I think he's done the right thing. No, but I think, you, but like he played his cards. He played his cards well. You know, maybe she would say. It's, you know it's, I mean? it's all right to do that. I, you know, at the end of last season, I was very much coming back from that Bournemouth shambles. I was a bit like, do you know what? You, you know, yeah, JB's done does a lot to keep this club ticking over. But I was being a bit cynical, and I was saying, is he just in it for the development? Because he just, you know, at some stage, he's either got to back this side and really go for it, or you know. Get, get, yeah, shit will get off the pot, right? And and I think that Rowett, who's a clever, he's, you know, he's very tactically astute, right? And so he's probably gone, okay, well, how can I play this to the best of my ability? And Ra I, look, I think Gary Rowett, I don't think he particularly loves Millwall Football Club. I no. think what he does really like is the fact that it's stable employment and we've got a chairman that is that is risk averse and doesn't just isn't just going to go oh we're bringing in John Luca Vialli to manage us next season because uh, we think that he might bring in a few Italian players he hasn't he hasn't got that sort of madness going on yeah so I think it's exactly Dan probably what he did he went well look there's no put you know I've got this three year plan COVID messed up the last one but this this would be the cul this season coming up now would be the culmination of what I was trying to achieve. So you either give me a bit more and back me, or what's the point? Yeah. Um, and he some of that. He, he uses his use contract situation as leverage. Yeah. To, and I think, you know, and and I think he probably did. Dan, I don't think he was particularly courted by other. I, he certainly didn't go and court other football clubs because why? Why would you? But other football clubs in the championship, if he had gone, well, I'm going to step away. He his he would be one of the first people to be picked up by whoever goes first in the championship this year, right? I'd go. Actually, you've done a great job with no money at Millwall. You all you make you know you were what two points and goal difference off the playoffs at the end of last season, which is remarkable given our attendance and given our budget. But, I mean, but Charlie saying there, my mate Charlie, me and him always agree on stuff. People saying Rowett needs to change a lot. This is why, I, I, to, to right at the back end of last season, I felt he changed a lot of what I already wanted him to change. He made us a threat coming forward. He made us, you know, a force at home again. He was he was um, trying to go and win football matches. And I did say this before we signed anyone in pre-season. I just said, oh, it just seems like he's got a new swagger about him, Rowett. And yeah. I thought, listen, I hope I'm fucking right. I've seen there in the comments, by the way, that Richard Cowley has confirmed on Twitter that 
QPR bid three hundred thousand pounds for Danny McNamara. That's been confirmed. Cheeky fuckers. Um, we'll get onto that later. But next up, um, Rowie said he's, he wants two or three more through the door. Mm-hmm. Um, where do we believe these positions to be? Right. Well, or, where, or where do you think they should be? Okay, so right back, left back, right back, left back for me. Um, and maybe I don't know, I say maybe another attacking option. We've got quite a lot yeah. of that. I, I think maybe another central defender if we're thinking that you know Mitch and Thingy at the back aren't going to be the ones, but you know, I, 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 I don't for me that's it because like Murray Wallace cracking you know cracking season last year um but how how long can he keep that going for at some stage you know he may get exposed for a lack of pace or something I don't know yeah Danny Mack and obviously we've got Scott Malone that can fit in behind Wallace for me I'd, I'd start Murray Wallace over over Scott Malone, which because we've yeah, got his other the issue, players, like you I just mean, said there, yeah. Murray Wallace. The issue for me is a Murray Wallace. The issue is Scott Malone, and I think you need to pull yes. Murray Wallace yeah. out that back three and put him a left wing back. So we've got Long and Bolkowski, got to, and the, and, and the luckiest man in football, Ryan Sanford, who's quite good at quizzes, by the way. If you saw him on the recast, that um, <laughs> they're the goalkeepers, and you've got Cooper, Hutchinson, Murray Wallace, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alex Mitchell, and Hayden Muller, right. Mm-hmm. I won't lie, the latter two I really like. They're both very different types of defenders, but I don't think Rout rates them. Um, and, oh, and Creswell. So we've now got yep. six centre-backs, right? And into that, you can also play... Do you know you've been eating through this entire hour and one minute? So... M- 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 it's, it's dinner time. I've also got, like, my kid's just come back down the stairs and sat himself in front of Postman Pat and the telly again. <laughs> so he's still awake. Like, I'm thinking he's going to finish that in a minute. He's going to finish that. Well, no, I've, like, and I've been eating like turkey dinosaurs and chips, mate. It's like it's a proper, you know, it's a hearty like, meal, mate. Mate, I'm going out of my way to get on your show tonight. Legend, mate. So at, at this minute um, in time, we've got six centre backs. Yeah, but I, I, look, and and I think that's why I'm hopeful that he's going to sort of try and keep either Mitchell or Muller around the first team a bit more. But like you said, you know, he sent them out on like well, where, where were they last season? Like Orion and uh, St. Johnston. He didn't Johnston. really work out for Hayden. He came back. And, uh, but like I've got it, you know, um, Jeff Burnage reckons that, I, I think it's Hayden Muller is like one of the quickest players at the club. Or is that yeah. Mitchell? I can't remember. But he reckons no, he is lightning quick. fast. Um but you know, they're, they're you, I mean, Gary Rout would know a, a lot better th- than me about, about those individuals. But I just think that you know, if it would be great if he could go and learn something from Cresswell, right? Because they're similar ages and they'll learn off a professional who's played international football at some level, right? You know, under 21s level, that's there's no mugs there. Um, so but that, that, that's for me, that Danny Mac, Danny Mac, Danny Mac. I mean, who's who's pushing for Danny Mac's position? Yeah, no, well, the problem this is what I was going to add to. Is you've also got Ryan Leonard, right, and George Evans, who can both also mm-hmm. play centre back and they can also they can. play centre mid. Leonard, of course, can also play right wing back. So I think yeah, that's what I he's thinking and utilising. There was rumours linking us with um, Nathan Byrne, wasn't it, from from Derby? But apparently that wasn't true. That was just uh, agents stirring the pot. So Malone and Murray Wallace, I still think we need a left wing back without an absolute doubt because I think Malone's gone. If I'm honest. Um, and in midfield, you've got Billy Mitch, you've got George Savile. Yeah. I, I think Honeyman's going to be considered one of those midfielders. I know you think yep. he'll be a 10, but which yep. he will be, but he can also play there if need be. Who else have we got? Mitchell, Savile, Leonard, Evans. So we've got five centre midfielders. I think the issue for us still is up and, and Fleming, who's a 10. And people are asking about, you know, what about Bennett? What about Bury? Yeah. For me, I love Mason Bennett, and he proved last season how good he can be. But I see someone say on Twitter the other day, write him off, he'll be injured by five past three on Saturday the 29th of, of, of thing. So that's one issue with, with, with uh, Bennett. And Bury, I think, if we do get another attacking player in, I think you might see him go out on loan. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, he did. He was out on Hartlepool, wasn't he, for the, for the first part of last season, did very well, then went a bit mental and... Like had 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 those personal issues in his car, um, and then uh, came back and really, at times, 
showed what a lively player he came on at that Blackpool game and almost scored and definitely changed the last 15 minutes of that game because prior to that, we, I didn't think we, we were going to score again for the entire season by the you know state of the performance, but he came on and really changed it. The QPR game was just phenomenal, right, wasn't it? It was almost like a coming of age for him. And then I think towards the end of the season, it was a bit stop start. He didn't really, you know, get that, get that, um, get, get that sort of mojo back again. But he's, you know, what a great youngster having it around the side. And I, you know, and, and I really think what is good is that you know now he's got people challenging for for his spot. There's competition for places, which is something Neil Harris already, always spoke about. You got good competition for places. That means you train harder. Everyone's a bit more up for it. And it spurs people on to have better performances, to want the ball more in games. So it can only be a positive that we've got got all these options. Um, but for me, Dan, that's where we need. Like we need we need someone back up there in some sort of position or to challenge Danny Mack, and we need someone at left back. Yeah, I, I still think we're an out and out striker short as well. And the thing is, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to write down who are strikers and who are attackers. But in this day and age, there ain't really like a. Stan Collymore and Ian Wright, like out and out, like an Alan Shearer. Like, you don't really like that anymore, is it? But I'm not sure where a lot of people are asking the comments on Isaac Alafe, where where does he stand yes. on with him? Yeah. yeah. Again, you know, Alafe's right. 23 in November. I don't think he's going to get the chance. I think he'll go back out on loan and eventually leave the club. So I'm, I'm interested in this guy. I put I put loads of um graphics up and then forgot to use any of them. Um, <laughs> where is he? And now I can't find the one I want. No, he's about somewhere. We're talking about Ellis. Um, what's his second name? Ellis Sims, the Everton striker. Again, a player we're interested in potentially buying. That to me is an exciting one. Kev, you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Yeah. We're, we're was... just talking about areas we need to strength. Gary Rowett said that two or three more might be coming in. Mm. Uh, where do you think we need to, to add to the squad? Areas. Question. I mean, um, I think now we've got the centre back sort of covered now because you've got Mitchell as well that can play at the back, haven't you? The other Mitchell. Alex um, Mitchell, yeah. Alex, but we, uh, I think he's pretty decent. I think with him, you've got the other three. You've got uh, Cresswell, Hutch, and Cooper. You've got that pretty covered. Danny McNamara has got, he got Leonard to cover him at that position. The left wing back, I mean, Malone for me, having not known Malone a little bit, and a bit about him, he's a confidence player. Now, he goes on the pitch, he's got a dodgy haircut. We all <laughs> think he's flash, he's not. He is a confidence player. And with Malone, if something goes against him in the first 20 minutes, his head falls for the game. He's a player that needs someone to put their arm around him and say, you can do this. Because when, I'll tell you what, Malone, when he cuts in and he scores, and he hits one of them shots, so he cuts it across the keeper, I tell you, he's got a dig on him. He's got 20 goals a year in him. He's got... No, maybe that's... 20 exactly goals right. a year? No, no, I exaggerated. I, I meant to say 10. I meant to say 10. He's got 10 in him, but, and, and he's got possibly another 10 assists. But he's off the boil. He's got absolutely no competition for his position whatsoever. If you don't play Malone as a left wing back, who do you play then? Well, this is the thing. I think we do need someone in that area. And I think if if not, I'd rather play Murray Wallace there, to be honest. Wallace, Wallace to me, is back he's a, of a part is a back three. He's of a back three. He's 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 in he's in the other he's in the mix with the other four for the three at the back. Murray Wallace, as long as I've got an hole in my ass, he's not a left wing back. I love the geezer to death. Square red, love him. But he is not a wing back. He is not someone that we saw the bloke who played for it so the bloke who played for um Birmingham terrorized us, didn't he? Uh, the bloke who yeah. was at Charlton, he terrorized us. What Lyle Taylor? Lyle Taylor. We haven't got we haven't got no one on the left who can really yeah. penetrate push into the box. But but again, I like I've I've got to be honest, I think he only terrorized us because we we were it's, like Billy Mitchell weren't playing. Like I really felt like yeah. that was the game that for me. And I'd I'd spent you know Dan when I come on here every week I was you know I was the only person I think back in January defending Gary Rowett at that game yeah. I was like come on mate what are you doing like what are you doing for me Billy Mitchell was the player of the season last year and I say that because of the amount of games he played at his age and he held his own and people you know were giving him quite a bit of grief and I was like well, you know he's he's a he's a youngster finding his way in the team and he's like 
a hyper Ben Thompson, who in who looks like he's technically better at playing the game. And I think he's probably only hamstrung by the formation and style that Gary Rowett wanted to play him in. Okay. Um, and he didn't play him in that game. And it just like, and from the first 10 minutes, we were on the back foot. And I was like, why has he done this? And, you know, I, I like Clifton Feld. I thought he started last season really strongly. And I thought at times he looked like a really, good player. really good Bolly. player. Like, and then, and then he would just kind of go missing. And in that game, he just, he just, Clifton Feld looked like he hadn't played for six weeks because they, he hadn't played for six weeks. And I was he, like, the most important game of the season. Anyway, it's gone now. It's done. It is what it is. And at least it we is. didn't lose to them. And we it, smashed up Birmingham. Birmingham. Oh, there you are. Birmingham fans said to me, yeah, Birmingham fans said to me, after what happened the week before, that was exactly the game they needed. A Millwall game. Big, big oh, away. Well, spanked about 5-1 or something, didn't they, yeah. week before? And they said that oh, the Millwall... Six or seven, Dan. Seven? Seven, yeah, at it? Blackpool at seven at Blackpool, yeah. Seven at Blackpool. And they said that Millwall, Millwall coming to town was just what they needed. It's just what they needed mm. in terms of pick big game, pick the gate up, and a, and they put in a good shift of a performance. You can't, yeah, you can't well, argue with that. You can't argue nah. with that at all. Millwall, a Millwall question here from Jamie, like, right? Sorry, sorry, Kev. Changing it from what we talking about, because we didn't really cover the goalkeepers because we don't feel like we need to. Um, do I think Big Bart will last another season? Bart was yeah, 35 yesterday. I couldn't believe that. I, I, I've got it on you know, good old Forry that, that Long's a fucking good keeper and good with both feet. He's played I well think... in, in like the um, the League Cup matches, but apparently he's a decent cat. But I think I think in time he will be... I think he's there. He's been promised he will become the number one. People rate him out there saying, look, happy, nine out of ten. <laughs> but to be honest, I've got, I've got no arguments. Like, like Kev said earlier, he seems to have changed his... His, his mentality and he's, he's, he has, he's actually trying to buy attacking players and the right sorts of players as well. I've got no quite. Do you know what? I'm, and, I, and I can just say, I'll, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And if I change my opinion, I'll hold my hands up. And I was row it's biggest row it out like a lot of people. I must have missed that, me, Kev. <laughs> you'd miss that, have you? Me row it out. Row it ain't missed because every time I see him, doesn't it, Danny? He'd let me know. He, he let me know at the ring that me and Aints went to. You know, he knows it. But I said to him, I can only comment on what I see. If someone's playing like a dick, I'm going to tell them, you're not playing like a dick. End of story. But I said, but equally, it's not your fault, Rowett, when someone misses from five yards that's paid about 30 grand a week. That's not his fault. But what he's done in this pre-season, since he signed the contract, for me, he's done great business and it's, he's given us a lot of optimism and, and, and solidified us as a top half championship side now, we have to take your hats off and give him the chance now that can he kick on this season and put us in the top six? Can he do it? Well, you've led me on beautifully to my next question. And, and I got asked to do these podcasts earlier and I kept saying, no, no, wait, wait, because it would have been a ma it would have been a massacre on Gary Rowell if we had done these podcasts three weeks ago. And I said, wait till we got everyone in, wait till we got everyone in. Now with four players in and potentially a couple of more decent ones on the horizon. Um, where do you think we're going to... If you had to predict where Mill are going to finish this season, boys, give us your predictions. Oh, look, at look at H. He's absolutely sweating on his answer, H. He's sweating. <laughs> I know, Ross. Oh, I, I, I think I think we'll finish... Oh, I don't know, fifth or sixth. He, six. he really wants to say sixth, doesn't you, H? <laughs> yeah, no, you I think do. we're going to make the playoffs, yeah? Oh. I'm sixth. I'm 100% square six. My, look, I'll be honest with you. My heart tells me yes, fifth or sixth. My head tells me you're a Millwall no. fan. What are you talking about? Um, just be, like I just, I've got to be honest. Like just, me, playoffs, fourth. That, I'm, I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm with John. John was the first one to comment, and it's exactly what I thought. Unfortunately, the pain Seven. on the last day. <laughs> oh, cheers, Dan. Blackpool away is going to be. Feeling, we'll just finish just outside, but. I hope I'm wrong. Jamie Choke playoffs. Stephen Banks top ten. Yeah, I, I think, think like Kev says, we're, we're, we're there and thereabouts now, and I can't see us getting. I, I agree. I, 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 think, I think. Look, I think that there are so many different things that can happen in the Not course of the season. The bounce of a football. Someone gets injured at the wrong time. We got injuries at the wrong time last season. It's a miracle we went into the last game of the season with a chance of making the playoffs. Yeah. 
still. To, and But like when I saw Forrest get promoted and I looked at the teams in the playoffs and I thought, we've nicked points off all of them this season. There were nobody in that playoff that Tudor. were better than us, in my opinion. Um because I thought the Forest game, like we turned Forest seasons round with that last minute winner at the Den. That was the turnaround. I think they lost maybe two games or three games after that. Um, we we were, you know, and they brought in four loan signings, didn't they, in that January window? And that was a difference. That's what got them promoted. I mean, Lewis Graben scored quite a few goals as well, from to be fair. But you know, it, it wasn't like. Uh, and, and everyone was going, oh, it was this game, it was that game. For me, there were two games that cost us the playoffs. The first one was the Swansea at home match. Oh, it's terrible. It was, that was. Like, it was like a pre-season friendly and I've just, I don't know how a centre-back manages to run a, a game. The number 26 for for um, for Swansea just run that match. And, the, and and then the other one for me is that Birmingham away match where Gary Rowett lost his marbles and decided Patrick, he wasn't going to play. Lost that game. Yeah. In the first I reckon that. Of- Go on, Kev. Go on. You say what you're going to say, and then I'll, I'll go after you. No, no, because no, I, I, I think it's a solid sixth. I think we will sneak into sixth, and we'll and and it, and then from that point on, it's a lottery. It's the playoffs. It's whatever no. team turns up. Well, look, we're, we're not we're not a million miles away at the minute, are we? But can I just yeah, at least people who let you've not seen one comment, Dan, that said bottom half of the table. That is a testament to how far Mill will come as a side. That would have been 15th, 16th, 12th at best. 12th would have been seen as coming second in the league. We are now expecting top half of the table. The mentality, and the Gary Rowett has changed that mentality. Whether I like it, you like it, he has done it. And now, if he gets it, because he's never been at a club this long before. He's never been that long at a club. He's now solidified himself in the club if he gets it right next year with his signings, top six is looming. Top half of the table is a certainty, in my opinion. And that, to, lot, me, that yeah. to me, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. The last the five years, week. though, the last five years we've been in the championship, we finished seventh, 19th, 8th, 11th, and 7th. When We've never really been at that top, top half. But can I just say something which it might sound negative? And I, I don't want to be negative because I'm really confident about this season now, but a bit of a reality check, right? We've signed four players. One of those was Benny Kofobi, already played for us. Yeah. Uh, two of the other three have never played in the championship. Chris Hunt, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I've just been... I've just, no, 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 and that's just, the reason why I don't think we're going to be there, there. There. I just think it's a little... I just think, look, it's brilliant. Everyone's optimistic, as am I. But in all honesty, a little bit of a reality check. Fleming's never played in England. Creswell's never played in the championship. A phobia we already had. So we've only, you know... Good points. Yeah, good those, points. Those, and, two, and those two players... I know we've only thought of that now. But those but two players thing, might be brilliant. We don't know, but... And that's, still, and that's got to go right. Right there is the thing. I think a lot of it rests, you know, without putting too much pressure on him, but, but on the Fleming effect. Because if he can come in and do... Similar stuff to what Jed Wallace did. We've strengthened in those other areas, and we've got rid of players who, you know, like well, Deadwood. Got rid of, you know, we, we've we've we have improved year on year the squad, and we've now got a solid mid-table championship team. And if we could just get a cup, bit of a flair from some of those other players, then we've got a playoff or a top, you know, top ten, as we've said. So yeah, so it is it is all down to see how how that comes. But if we can perform like we did at home, right this season, like we did last season. And we just pick up a few more away points and we don't drop stupid points at places like bloody Peterborough and Blackpool. Mm. And I know we're not I know before people start messaging and saying, I know Peterborough aren't in our division anymore, but you know, games like that. Um it's you know, all awesome. Um, that day. If we um if we okay, so here's, here's another question that's just popped into my while we're doing it. We finished no, we finished ninth last year in the end, didn't we? It was eighth or ninth. I think Blackpool went above us in the last day. Eighth, if, isn't it? Eighth. if we finish anywhere between 10th and 15th this season, is it a failure? No. Go on, Kev, why not? No. Why? Because Millwall's budget suggests they should be in the bottom three, get, going down to be a top division mm-hmm. league one side. That's why. No, it's good. I, I like your answer. I think that's good. I, I just about, think a lot of people now are so expecting that if we don't get the playoffs, they're going to think it's no. a failure. No, Dan, it's all about the football that Millwall played this season. That's what, what that's what Arab be judged on. 
if we True. play of attacking flair and we go for it the Millwall way, no one's got a qualm now. No one's got it's when they're lazy and don't play like that and it's ne negative and sit back. That's what people didn't like. It didn't like it, but I oh, to be continued on that one. Um, what do you what do you reckon? H, you reckon he's back? Still there, mate? Yeah, no. Someone ring him and like, someone's stuck in a lift, but they can wait in there for twenty five minutes anyway. <laughs> it's probably someone that can to the state who's or high or something, so he can wait in there. Oh. Let the fire brigade get him out. Trev, money. you said who, who's his other two or three you're expecting through the door? But there was rumours of this uh, Arsenal youngster, uh, Matt Smith. I'm not sure on, on that to be honest. Uh, this one seems to be a goer, Ellis Sims. He's a big, he's a big lump and all. He's a big lump. Been on loan at Hart, scored goals. Been on loan at Blackpool, scored goals. But I don't know. Listen, I thought we might say might get done this week, and we have left it slightly late. But Rowett said a couple of really good quality players still left to come in, which begs the final question. Um, H sent me starting eleven for Stoke as we stand. Yeah, earlier on today. Let's have a look at. So I've got a couple of screens and I forgot to make it a graphic. H, you sent me that earlier and you said, no, that's not what you sent me. No, that's not what I sent you. Dang, that's, 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 that's slander, H. That slander. That's not what you sent me. Normally, that is. That's that Jill Sander. Hang on. That wasn't what you sent me. That was me, that was me discussing different formations with our people. Hang on. See, you um, lied about H. <laughs> I'm going to put it on the screen, H. Go with that. I think H we've, had, we've, had, we've had enough of fake news, haven't we, for a little while? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Got, got Boris Johnson up top, haven't you? Boris Johnson. Oh god, listen, it said about that shit about um. Right, hang is on. The, is, oh, I've gone Daniel since he said he's a Millwall fan. <laughs> what you saying? I'm watching a few things on him this morning. What an absolute character! Oh, there you go. Right. Oh, let's leave politics out. It's fucking. Do you know what? I know nothing about politics. Not interested. They're all fucking. Uh, I mean, football. Other than H, hey, hang on. H is a politician. Uh, H is a politician. <laughs> he is very. He's very uh, diplomatic. Age, isn't he does sit on the fence a lot. He's like Trevor Brookin. I don't sit on the fence. That's I didn't sit team. on the fence about about Gary Rowett. No, <laughs> you got that one right, mate. Uh, this is the team that H sent me today that you'd start the season with. I've got to be honest. Mine's probably one player off that. And that's and that's Sunny Savile out yeah. and Honeyman in. The Honeywell in, yeah. I, 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 that was a toss up for me. That was a toss up for me. But that's 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 how I would, that's how I would start. I think I just you can't play a phobia. I mean, I think you that you might rotate that triangle at the top. Row it might. I wouldn't play a lone striker. I think Daniel no, said this. He plays no, better no, with two up front. Um, but yeah, that that for me, you know, that looks like a. A strong side, and that's an improve an improvement. Is it on last year? I don't know. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. Um, Look at the forward line. I mean, when you've got players like Bennett to come on that pitch, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking. Obviously, Fleming then, for Wallace, right? Yeah. And Jed, whatever people think about Jed, he was he was a phenomenal player for us. Don't. But the thing is, will, will, will Fleming's years. sort of will Fleming's presence and his previous of being a ten be enough to make Rowett play him there because. As we know, see that team last year weren't far oh, off. That's what I, I say. You're not so. a million miles off last season there. Nah. And I know we're all excited, but that's about that's about two players different, and one of them is not Jed. Yeah, but if so Cresswell like, can play out from the back, right there, there, if Obi play there, the whole Jed didn't but, but, reach much towards the end anyway. No, he didn't. My, my point here, Dan Bean, is that if we can get Cresswell like you said, to be a bit more of a baller and to free up some space there so that maybe Mitchell doesn't have to drop as deep and they can he can free up Savile and Mitchell a bit more because he can play almost as a diamond there, right? So he might sit a little bit in front of, exactly like you've got there, Cooper and Hutch, and there's someone that could maybe try and be that player that can pick out a pass or something. That, that would be a huge difference. And we don't know about Fleming. The great thing is, is neither do other championship sides. So they'll be a bit like, well, who is this geezer? We've watched him at Fortuna Sittard, but what does that mean for us? So we'll just have to see how he gets stuck in. Let's hope he's not the next Uwe Fuchs, eh? Did that yeah, did pop one, one of them Russians. One of the Russians. Yeah, the Russian, on yeah. the old we haven't got a great history, have we, with, with foreign players, but I'm not complaining. I think it's a... Christoph Kinney, I, I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right then, boys. Well, listen, we we'll call it a night there, eh? It's been going where, an hour and a half. Where do we, where do we, if you look at H's, I just thought, was like, looking at H's formation there, yeah, of a starting lineup, how many goals do you count in that team? Like, if you go through that team, how many do you think we'll get from that season? Well, it depends I, how you're playing Savile, because for me, he can get double figures, in my right. opinion, if he's played in the right place. I don't know, who knows about Fleming? I mean, if we're going on prior season's goals in that river divis to a division she you know he's getting between 11 and 15 right a phobie we know as i've said look i've said that a phobie could get a lot more than he got last season but let's say he comes in at 15 and if bradshaw stays fit let's say he comes in at 15 we get the odd yeah. one from mitchell we'll get the odd yeah, boy, couple from sorry, Cooper. Both been all right, get a couple. 15 a phobie 15 like it's a fucking throw in a park it's no, gonna be difficult but... for to get 30 between them yeah, I know. I know they got but, 23 last season. They'll be looking to improve on it, but... Don't they run the whole season? They That's three together. and a half each, and Phoebe could have got that in the Forest game alone. Yep, yep. I'm just, I'm trying to be positive, Dan. That's all I am. Like, I know, and, and this, and, you know, this is negative. why we're on here. But that is what I'm saying. So there we are. But, yeah, but, but yeah, I think Wallace... I mean, if you look along the back five there, yeah, with the wing-backs, I think Wallace can chip in with five goals in a season very easily. Yeah, agree. So the, the same for Cooper. Yeah. The same funny for enough, Kev, funny enough, when we looked at that thing, I looked at I immediately looked at the back line and thought they'll chip in with a few. They, they could be up to 20 goals across that back line. Up to 20 and, and a few assists from Gorners where Cooper or Hutchinson knocks the ball down. I mean Matt Namara, I'd like love to see Matt Namara shoot a bit more because he's got that potential to shoot. He scored two goals last year, I think. I'd like to in see same, him in, in the same game as well. Yeah. yeah, but he's, he gets in very good positions to shoot. And it's like he gets in a position, then he's like a rabbit in the headlights. What do I do next? Just hit it low and hard. Hit it yeah. low and hard in the corner, and I think he'll get more goals. I think there's a lot more goals in Millwall this season than there was last year. That is my opinion. And when you're looking at games, like you said, like Blackpool away, where we had no shots on target whatsoever, we've now got a team we look like we can create. And we've got players up front that can assist as well as create. That is, to me, a massive step in the right direction. And with someone like Cresswell in the middle, shoring our defence up in the middle, it can only be good, can't it, lads? Can it not? Oh, yeah, I'm confident. I am confident, but I still think we need to add to it. And like, like I said, he's going to do that. So it'll be interesting to see what this <laughs> and next week brings. Of course, we kick off Saturday against Crystal Palace behind closed doors. Dart for the way Tuesday. Um, Colchester away next Saturday. Friday. Then it's Watford got cancelled, didn't it? And then it switch at home, and then we're off. We're off and running. So, so who do we realistically think those two or three players are? Because we've all got a reason. No idea. Great. No idea. No, I've got I'm, I'm, no I'm idea. Person no idea. Fucking off I'm the I've got no idea who those players are. No idea. I'd like to see a centre forward and a left and a left wing back. Le yeah. Identified not, left left wing back. A hundred percent. We need one. We was it we was linked with that longer low, weren't we? Yep. <laughs> Steve, I've just seen that. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I luckily I haven't, I haven't put I have I put the stream out? No, I haven't yet, but it's um <laughs> it's one o'clock. Yeah, I'll be a bit fucking late to the party, mate, when I right. Every, thanks for tuning in, everyone. That's the first one done. I feel worn out after that. Maybe I need to get back into the swing of things, but good, hopefully mate. there'll good. be some Den Dailies out tomorrow with some players Why coming in. <laughs> uh -huh. It was a lot of talking. I didn't go for a lot of wine this time. That's a, that's a sign of a good show, isn't it? I've only nice done time. half a bottle. Yeah, I have to go and crack on the other half. Joe, oh, the God. chat, the conversation just flowed. And why did it flow? Because we've got lots to talk about with Mia Wall. And we can't grumble about the fact we've got positive and a lot of things to say. I, I can't. I am, like I said, Joe, Wallace, when he left, saw them fixes. I thought, oh, fuck, give me a season to get back. Now, three weeks later, I am. Very, very positive and very happy with the signings. Like never in, I'd say, five years have I seen signings of this quality. And I can't actually remember when we had so many of this quality in the right positions. I can't. Uh, if you if you can name a season where we signed this quality of players pre-season, prior to going into a season, then I can't think of one. Uh, well, let's hope the Bermondsey Burkham turns up amongst others, but... There you go. Cheers, Ike. Cheers, Kev. Cheers, cheers boys. Good All right. everyone. Please Thanks, subscribe to mine, Steve. Sorry, mate. Sincere, lads. Take care. Cheers, mate. Come on, you lion.